Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on this webinar today, looking at an introduction to the Office of Industrial Relations Return on Investment Calculator. If you have any questions regarding the presentation, the ROI calculator, or you may want to get involved with a case study and any research we're doing at the Office of Industrial Relations, um, please contact me at oirdata at oir.qld.gov.au. Um, also, feel free to type in any questions you may have throughout the webinar. If I don't get around to answering them throughout the webinar, again, please email me at the address seen on this slide. Or alternatively, we'll email the registrants with answers to the questions I didn't get around to. So we'll flick to our first polling question. Um, have you had a chance to look at or to use the ROI calculator before this webinar? All right, fantastic to see that about 60% of you have had a look at or had a chance to use the calculator. Um, so the key points for today are to one, get a general idea of how you could apply the ROI calculator to help you make a business case for your health and safety investment, whether that be an engineering solution or administrative control. And two, to get an understanding of what the Office of Industrial Relations has been doing in this space as well as the factors and information required to be input into the ROI calculator. So return on investment, what is it? So most of you will know what it is. Simply put, it's the total benefits divided by the total cost. And usually it's presented as a percentage, like an ROI of 150%, or $3.10 of benefits gained per $1 of cost invested. And this information is typically used to calculate an ROI and can also be used in a cost benefit analysis. And so we typically use ROI to evaluate the efficiency or cost effectiveness of an intervention and compare this figure across multiple intervention options. So for example, um, we want, might want to compare elevated work platforms or fall rest options and so on to reduce the risk of working at height. Essentially, we want to answer the questions like, is it worth it? Is it bang for buck? And which option really gives the greatest productivity gains? So what's the Office of Industrial Relations done so far? And so we, with a literature search and also industry feedback, found that there weren't many practical cost benefit tools that really capture the true cost of a workplace incident and implementing a health and safety intervention. And so we sought to develop our own ROI calculator that would be available online as opposed to Excel spreadsheets that you can download and probably get lost in your um, number of files. In your, on your computer that would capture both positive and negative ROI. And so we want to do this because we believe it's really important to know what works and what doesn't um, across different business sizes and industry sectors. On our website now, we have published a few case studies uh, showcasing the costs and benefits of businesses like the Port of Brisbane and BP Wild Beans Cafe at the travel centers uh, from investing in their health and safety controls. So we will flick over to our second polling question. Uh, what would you like the Office of Industrial Relations to do more to support you to justify the business case for health and safety intervention? So about half of you have said that we, you'd like to see more resources on our website for example, guides of how to do things like uh, checklists as well. And so we'll definitely take that feedback into account and endeavor to put more of these resources out for you. And so most of you would agree that health and safety practitioners are increasingly required to perform cost benefit analyses or justify the investment to senior management. However, the true cost is often not taken into account. So just in Queensland alone, uh, it's estimated, estimated that $5.8 billion is attributed to the total economic burden of work-related injury and illnesses. And so it is a significant direct and indirect cost um, associated with workplace incidents. So what information is actually required to enter into the ROI calculator? So the direct costs involve the upfront investments, such as $8,000 for a new elevated work platform, or perhaps even as well as the time and wages spent um, for the health and safety manager to consult with workers, supervisors, and managers prior to implementing the control in your workplace, as well as any ongoing costs, such as, for example, paying a contractor $100 an hour for maintenance work. And so we move on to the indirect or hidden costs. And so many of the indirect costs to businesses 
that aren't necessarily captured when evaluating the ROI of implementing a new control is the cost of avoiding incidences um, and minimizing the risk of an incident occurring. And so these costs include immediate incident costs, uh, such as the time taken to provide first aid and any immediate uh, production downtime, investigation costs, so all the hours or all the work hours involved with investigating the cause of the incident if required, um, any damages to your own plant and equipment or, for example, product that you need to ship to your customers. And finally, the loss of productivity associated with the injured worker, so such as their capacity for work, how long has it taken for them to get back up to speed, and how long it has taken for a replacement worker, if necessary, to be able to fully perform in the job. And so we had a question here uh, from Jeremy. Is it possible to add a link to our website to the ROI calculator? We'll definitely um, talk to our communications and awareness engagement team to ensure that this is allowed um, just with government, uh, uh, obviously, privacy concerns. Um, but we'll definitely get back to you, Jeremy. Thanks. And finally, obviously, the benefits or the health outcomes of your health and safety solution. Um, such as health outcomes and productivity gains. So these could include avoidance of lacerations occurring, so due to new machinery or guarding, and for example, um, time saving of say five minutes, of the job taking five minutes less than it used to. And obviously there are some intangible benefits such as employee morale, culture shifts, and increased tender capability, for example, that are quite difficult to measure. Um, but they should be presented alongside any ROI or cost benefit analysis anyway as part of the whole story or justification as to why health and safety investment is really worthwhile. And so we'll flick over to our third polling question. Would you think this calculator is more useful for A, looking back in time, so retrospectively, to evaluate the ROI of the health and safety control you've already implemented? B, predicting um, an ROI estimate for a control you're thinking of implementing, so looking forward in time, or perhaps you'd think that you probably would use this for both. So we see here that half of you probably would use it for both looking at it back in time, so retrospectively, as well as uh, in the future, so forward estimate um, of your return on investment, which is great. And this on our WorkSafe website is where the ROI calculator lives and is part of our e-tools, uh, which were developed to help better manage workplace risks, including heat, noise, and hazardous manual task risks. So clicking onto the ROI calculator, I'll just share my screen, brings us to this page. And so it's a, firstly a disclaimer, ensuring that all information is kept private and confidential unless otherwise instructed by yourself. And so if you read through that and you click agree, we come to a preliminary page. And so this asks for basic demographic information. Um, obviously, for example, what type of health and safety intervention did you undertake? So we'll just put in a webinar case study machine guarding, for example. Um, have you experienced any reductions in injuries attributable to, to the intervention? So if we were to do, if we were thinking that yes, we expect that um, this particular intervention will uh, reduce, say, for example, two lacerations a year, so it clicks yes. Sometimes you might not necessarily be able to predict whether it will reduce any injuries or illnesses in the workplace. For example, if you are um, implementing administrative controls, you might want to put no or unsure. So you'll select what industry or business you're in, for example, manufacturing, the number of employees you have in your business, and optional, but if you want to get involved with a case study, for example, um, you can enter your, your name, so Olivia Hughes, Proprietary Limited, <laughs> my name, and my email address. So we'll go oir data at oir.qld.gov.au. And that brings us to step one of eight of immediate costs, looking at the typical incidences. So the first five steps look at um, the indirect or hidden costs. So for example, your time to buy first aid, that might have taken two hours and a total, two total man hours, total cost of $50 per person and so forth. And so it looks at 
transporting to uh, the hospital or physiotherapist, um, any downtime by effective, for effective workers at the time of the incident or the injury, and time to make areas safe, for example, some of the costs and so forth. And so the good thing about this is that you can put in some comments to provide yourself some notes about the machine starting purchased on 3rd of the 12th, for example. You can save that. Uh, you can print it or save it as a PDF. And you can also save the link and email the link to yourself if you'd like to come back to it later. Also, the good thing about this is that you can flick through quickly and have a look at all the types of uh, information that you would or possibly might need to collect without actually entering any information. So it's good to have a uh, look the first time and then come back to actually uh, properly input your data. And so it is okay to leave fields blank. Not every single piece of information will be um, necessarily relevant to your business. Um, and so you only enter information that's relevant to your business. And also your browser or your internet browser, for example, Google Chrome or Firefox, will automatically save your progress through the internet cache, as well as you, need to, you do need to complete this within 30 days. Um, otherwise, your internet browser will forget um, the stored information in the browser. And as I mentioned before, please save your results um, as a PDF that you can print out and refer to later. Um, we have a question here from Roslyn. So can the ROI calculator be used to show the benefits of implementing a health and well-being program? So we, do, we did develop this calculator with the, I guess, uh, to be generic and to be broad to be able to capture both, um, I guess, your acute injuries such as lacerations, cuts, and all that kind of thing, but as well as health and well-being programs. So as you can imagine, not half, uh, you probably enter a lot of man hours or work hours involved, uh, as well as the productivity um, gains in terms of you expect, say, 30% increase in productivity, 20% increase in productivity, and measure it that way in terms of wages, perhaps, per uh, worker involved. And so hopefully that answers your, answers your question. So we've come to the end of the presentation. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, we have one from Aaron. Uh, will the return on investment calculator extend beyond personal injury to include environmental and property costs? Uh, well, we try to Im include property costs in terms of damages, but that's directly to the business. Um, environmental costs, it could be included as other in this case. It's really quite generic at this point in time. Uh, we do appreciate any feedback in terms of uh, user experience, uh, the interface, as well as the structure of the calculator, and that might be a potential um, thing that we do add in the future. So does the link expire in 30 days? There's another question. If so, do you receive a reminder that it's expiring? We currently do not have a reminder that it will expire, say, within three days or five days, and so you will have to save your results by that time. Um, yeah, we'll probably have to think about putting like a, a quick reminder or an email reminder um, as a feature of this tool. The link itself doesn't actually expire in 30 days, but it's just that the, your internet browser may forget the information if you don't save it previously. Uh, yeah, so can health and safety consultants use this tool or does it have to be a business? So health and safety consultants could use this tool um, if they're costing out a particular intervention or two or three different intervention uh, types for a client. Um, so yes, by all means, you can use this as well. Um, are there any case studies on the, using the ROI calculator on health and wellbeing programs? Um, so currently on the website, the Port of Brisbane uh, actually did um, cost out the health and well-being program, so they, they did an on-site gym as well as looking at uh, getting a, uh, gym memberships uh, for free for their workers. And so on the website when this webinar will be um, uploaded, there will be two others, so including the Port of Brisbane and Rexall Industry Supplies, I think, um, Electrical Supplies, sorry. Um, yeah, so we'll have a little bit more information as to how um, this information did, how we actually costed it, um, as well as uh, delving into the actual figures and information that we actually collected from the businesses that was relevant for each business.
So just a follow-up question from Aaron. Is it assumed that other field would be best to best field to include penalty notice as a legal cost? Yes, absolutely. So any tips on calculating intangibles such as training from Russell? Uh, so it will be mostly work on work hours that are involved. So for example, looking at how many employees. So for example, 10 people. Um, attended the training, as well as though you'd have to cost their time and their wages, as well as the trainer themselves, as well as any future consult, uh, future training as well, ongoing training rather as well. So will the presentation be made available to people after today? Absolutely. Hopefully we will get the sound to be louder on your computers if that was an issue for you. Um, and yes, we'll definitely upload this as well as a couple of the other case study uh, audio PowerPoints. Um, as to how we actually estimated and costed out the return investment figures for a couple of our case studies on the WorkSafe website. So just to answer Michael's question, so you basically input your data and the program produces a cost saving outcome in the PDF. Absolutely correct. Uh, at the end, there's an ROI of say, for example, $3 of benefits per dollar of cost, your t uh, a summary of the total benefits over 10 years, total cost, as well as a summary of the, I guess, the cost savings from avoiding incidences occurring in your workplace. Can we use the ROI calculator as a test? As a test mode to demonstrate to businesses? Um, yes, you could use it as absolutely. As I, um, as I said, you don't have to, um, I guess, input your information necessarily, like such as your contact details before you do it. Um, so you can flick through it and test it out before going in um, and saving it on your, um, putting it in your de contact details. So yeah, we'll, we'll finish up the webinar today. If you do have any questions, again, please email me at oirdata at oir.qld.gov.au. Uh, please look out for the recorded presentation or this recorded webinar. Um, as well as uh, the two audio recorded PowerPoints that we will put up at the same time as this webinar uh, as to the exact figures and how we actually costed out the ROI for two of our case studies. Thank you very much.